Hey, it's Joe Glines, and uh, this um, week I'm going to cover what I what I automated in the last two weeks instead of last week because I just didn't get around to documenting what I did um, the week before. I had I had a lot going on. I didn't actually use Auto Hotkey for a lot of it. I was doing a lot of stuff in SPSS. I still applied some principles, so I wanted to share some stuff just concept wise um, of what I did. One of which was I actually I leveraged this script, which I had. Um, demonstrated in one of the webinars before, but this is a way to generate um, unique codes. And so I was automating the texting, which I think I discussed before, but um, I had over 13,000 um, phone numbers I was going to text. And the link in there, I got it to where the link, um, I could tell if someone clicked it or not, but I couldn't tell who. And then I learned how to pass a parameter to the URL. And that way, each link had a unique ID to it. And this script allowed me to generate um, you know, 13,000. Actually, I because I had a really big list. Um, I created, I can't remember how big it was, um, 500,000, I think, unique IDs that have letters or numbers in it. Um, it took a while to run because this script isn't necessarily the most efficient at that. Uh, it's just randomly generating them and then sees if it's already created or not. But um, So I, I leveraged this one. Um, the next one was I was working on a project where one of my businesses, I'm, I'm getting data on households and stuff. And in this tool, you can only extract up to a thousand at a time. And also like here, I, I, there is no select all on this button here. And this stupid, I don't, I, this website is ridiculous. Come on, get rid of that. It, it, anyway, it goes away before. I don't know why it came back, but, um, yeah, whatever. Okay. So I'd have to go through and click each one of these to say download all selected tracks. So I wrote a super simple script. Let me see. I think it's in here. Extract all tracks. Um, this just goes and looks at and gets it by the, um, the class name and it says how many are there and then goes through and checks them. So let me see. I haven't tested this lately, but um, this is in IE. Yeah. So if I hit my hotkey, notice it went through and just selected all of them super fast. I guess I could have said after you select that to click this. Uh, and in and, and reality, what I would want, because it'll only select up to, I'm sorry, I can only export up to a thousand. What I would want is to actually monitor how many, because the row counts are in this, I think it's this column here, number of units. Um, so I could keep track of that and go up to a thousand and then export and then hit the button again and it would continue on, right? So automatically break them into parts for me. But again, that was you know, not counting my, my hotkeys for launching it, it's, it's you know, just a couple lines. Um, and, yeah, man, that would just save me a ton of time, right? So, um, let me exit out of that script. So, do that. Um, all right, the, the other one was I realized, um, actually, this tool, I was getting households, and I was going to take it, um, get the properties that then I want to go and find the owners of, and I realized, wait a minute, I have access to... The Denton County data um, to, to county data, and so I live in Denton County, and then there's Dallas County. Uh, but we, ha I have access to, um, I think, anyone in the U.S. You have access legally, um, may not be electronically, but nowadays I think it's more common than not um, to the the appraisal data and tax data. And so um, I had a, access to, I think it was around 400,000 rows of homes in uh, Denton County. And so I'm like, I already have these addresses and their owners and how long they've been in there and other information. And so I started to look at it. Um, unfortunately, this is what I wanted to show you, um, just to help to keep give you things to think about was the files. Um, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can pop open a file because most of them are so darn big. Um, in my, uh, do, do, do. Okay, data. Let me move this over but you know what they're um they're all pretty big but i can do one that's not the main file so this 4.5 gigabyte file right that's that's the main one i was looking at but let's go to one of the smaller ones because they're all similar format in the sense that they're um fixed width delimited i have a site tell me hey are you sure you want to open this big file um so i just said yes there so Oh, actually, this that looks... No, 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 let me see. View, white space. So notice there's no tab here, right? These are spaces. So this is called a fixed width file. So um, basically you'll have, uh, hopefully, um, they give you a layout file telling you, hey, the first... Actually, and, and this, is, this is what bugs me, right? I, I noticed from experience. The first um, column is actually this 
let me do it this way. This zero, oh, come on. This zero to like zero to eight and then a zero to 16, like that's the first column. And so you have to know those first, however many characters that is, it's, um, that's the first column. And then the next column starts here and goes, which I can't remember exactly to where, right? But there are actually separate columns in here. It's not just these two, right? These are separate columns in here. It's really a pain to deal with. Um, this is the file that um, tells you the layout. And so here, and actually, let's see, what was that file? Um, appraisal improvement detail, probably attributes. So back, oh, back in here, appraisal header, appraisal info. I'll explain the yellow stuff here in a minute. Um, and so you can see also, this is a wide, really wide file. Appraisal improvement. I guess I could just search for this thing. Entity, oh, come on. Why can't you find that? What? Oh, because cause this stupid G column, I didn't realize that was highlighted. Um, so it only searches within whatever's highlighted. So this is that file, and it's showing you it's a simple file, but here, here's the name of the variable, which would be the header, but they don't include a header row. What is wrong with these people? People in the government, gotta love them. Um, the type, um, and of course with AutoHotKey we don't care about that, but some programs do. And then where it starts, so it starts at the first character, it ends at the 12th, and, and they're telling you it's 12 long. The second one starts at that 13th position, so let's see if this is mapping out right. So is that the 13th position? Column 13, right? So that's the second one. 13 goes to 16, and it's four wide. So so it's just that 2018, right? And then the next one would start. So you have to go through <coughs> and map all this out. And, you know, it's just, it's you can't just pop open a file like in Excel and, and look at it because it's it's tedious. And so what I did, because also you saw that the, the files were like some of them are almost five gigs. Um, it, it was, they were very big. So I decided to use SPSS just because I know it better and I'm faster at it and it can handle big files, really big files. So what I did though, well, this is what I want to demonstrate or show you, was I used Excel to help to write a program to import and, and leverage this knowledge. And so I'm going to come over now. It's, some of this isn't going to make sense necessarily to you, uh, but it, I'll explain it here. Is uh, So... Here was the, um, I, I still just copied the field name, so just, just to have it next to here. And then this this care, this is the, um, what I did was I, I copied this out, and then I did a search for place on the um, left parens, and said I, I only want whether it says um, care, or char, or numeric, um, or integer. Um, and so that's what I put in here, right, because... Um, SPSS cares whether it's, you have to define it as either a string or an integer type, you know, numeric value. And so I wanted, because these numbers change, um, I didn't want to have to account for that. Um, so, and I'll explain that here in a second. So, but I put in just, I just said, okay, give me, give me this without the numbers, right? So I put that in here. Um, and then this is, this made it simple, right? I said, hey, if, if that value, let me, Double click it so we can see the formula. Oh, I thought that would highlight it better. Um, if H fifty seven, which is right here, oh, that's because it's just this one. Okay, if um if that equals C H A R, then put in an A. If it doesn't, put in an F. A is for a string character, um, and F is for like an integer, a floating point. I think is what it is, what it refers to. Um, and so that allowed me to get the A or F in this column, which is what I need for my syntax. Um, and then this next one. Um, actually, SPSS is zero indexed instead of starting at the one, so I had to subtract one from the start point, um, and then the same thing for the end point, and I put in the dash, uh, and my program needs a dash in it, and so this is minus um, the D56, right, so the end point, um, and then here I just concatenated things together, so I said um, this equals... Uh, I put a space at the beginning because I, I like to indent my stuff a little bit, and then, did I double click it? Uh, 
So here you can start seeing the, the formula, right? So it says, hey, take, put in a space and then put A56, which is the name of the variable, and then put in another space and then put in J56, J, J, J. So then say whether it's a, um, you know, the numeric or a character or a string character. Um, and then, so I basically just concatenated. That's why I line them up so it's easier for me to do. And I cranked this thing out in a couple minutes, right? Once I got in the flow of it. Um, and then once I wrote that one, then I could just double click here and it fills it all in. And this is my syntax for importing my file, right? I just can copy this and go paste it in SPSS. There's some other information I need, but this gives me the specific file layout. And you can see it goes, I mean, this is, this is what would be crazy, right? I have to do this for the entire file. The yellow, what I went through is after I imported the whole thing, and I started actually looking at the data, then I would go back in here and I'm like, you know what, I hear these yellow ones, these are the ones that I actually want. And so I was able to go through and say, okay, I want these, I want these. And what's cool, I got to say this about the um, fixed width delimited is you can change the order. So it doesn't matter like if, if in my syntax, I put this above the other one because it's telling you exactly where the columns are, the order that you, you have them in your file, doesn't matter. So I was able to, on my import, change the order and then also just completely exclude other stuff that I don't want to import. I don't have to import it first and then delete everything. Um, but but again, I just want to show you, it's, it's um, you can be creative in how you use Excel to help you write your syntax. Um, I do this a lot and it's it's really, really helpful. Um, so that was that one. The, the other one was, uh, so this file, these files, like, which I showed you were, were pretty big. Um, some of them, this is the one that had the data in it and it wasn't that recent. And so meaning the, some of the records of properties that had sold in the last like three months weren't in there. And so I happened to notice a file on there that just said nightly update or something. So I, I looked at that file and that actually it was surprising because I thought it would have just been, here's all the little changes that happen to be a small file. And it still was a decently small file, but it, um, it, a nightly extract. So it was it, but it, what it was, was actually all the properties and their current status. Um, and so that was, it was a much smaller file. The, the main file is, um, I have a couple different versions of this is the other stuff drives me nuts. See, it says CSV when you open it, it's not a CSV file. It's not comma delimited. I mean, sorry. All right. What are these people thinking? Um, oh, that one is. Sorry. Huh. I think I made it one. But the the um, some of these, they'll say CSV, and then they're not actually... Oh, this is one I exported. It's not the raw data. Um, where? So this DCAD, this is what it comes from. And then I think this is the file. This is the main file that... Um, it gets created that that is the daily nightly extract um, and every day I did check it every day so look it's pipe delimited right I'm like ooh, people loads of fun um, but pipes are still I'll take pipes over nothing over the, the fixed width delimited any day um, so I uh, well, anyway what I I found this file I'm like hey this one's updated it looked like within like three days it has all the records for all the properties so it's still 380 3,000 rows, I think, or 325,000 rows. Um, so it's a, it's a big file overall. It still actually wasn't size-wise. It, it was nothing compared to the other ones. It's 147 megs. Uh, but um, I realized, like, hey, I'm going to want to go get this file. And so um, it's on a website. So I saw the URL to the file, to the zip file. And so I wrote this. Where is it? Um, Hightly download. So this file... You know, hey, you take the URL, and it will go in, and it uses a Win API call, uh, HTTP. Actually, it's the X. It's, I think it's the other. Yeah, this MS XML one, because it's a digital. It's a binary file, and so I need to go and grab that file. It's not a text file. It's a binary file because it's a zip file, and so I had to download that. So I automated downloading it and writing it into that folder, and I didn't care if I overwrote it. Wrote it because. Um, I checked it a couple times and everything that was in there the day before will be in there plus some more. And so I don't care if I'm overwriting the file because I don't want a history of it because it would just keep appending and having way too much data in it. But um, 
then I automated, I, I use this other function to automatically extract the file from the zip file and I save it into that folder. So that whole process has been automated. Actually, let's, let's see here. So let's go here. I think it dumps it right in here and it should overwrite this file. I delete it first, but let's look at the timestamp. So that was yesterday. Um, let's, let's run, sorry, run it. Let me hit my hot, key. actually let's up, to, let me hit my hot key. And actually this file, the certified file up here, let me see, I guess sort by date modified maybe. No, nope, they're not, they're not right next to each other, but I was hoping they'd be right next to each other. It doesn't matter. So this date certified and date, um, the, the zip file and this file should, so they should also disappear. So notice I have them delete it. And then you're going to see this is the new file, which now has what? date created. Oh, that's interesting. Man, I would not have thought that. So the date modified got updated, but the date created didn't. So I don't even want to pay attention to the date created because that's confusing to me because it, it clearly wasn't created. Um, I just deleted it and created a new file. So it must be off of the source. So maybe there has been an update in a, in a day, but um, it updated it. And then this one is, is the new text file, which I just exported. And it was um, just created it At 5 a.m., that's not, I mean, thankfully it's 6.42 of my time, so it's a little later than that. Uh, let me see, and I wish I had remembered, you can always go back and see how many rows were in it. Oh, oh, I have it open. All right, you know what, before, because site was open with it, so it didn't, I don't think it has updated yet. Let's let's take a look. Hopefully this, I know it will, um, it would have updated, but I'm going to reopen it now, and this is the same file. Let's see, there's... Hopefully, a f wow, the site's freaking out. Hopefully there's a few more rows. Yeah, so it was 325.987, 325.938. That does not make sense. Interesting. I'll have to now, so I'm going to have to start studying this unless I goofed on something. Um, I didn't think things would disappear. I thought it would keep going up, so that's a good insight for me. That would mean I'm going to have to possibly keep keep an actual database in case some go away that I actually want to keep. Um, I don't know. So anyway, but the, I automated that process, which was nice. Um, then the next step was to append information to the households. And I was checking out one service, which um, profile append. So this, this was an API, which is empty, apparently. There we go, this one. And um, you can go through and append data if you have like the address and stuff of people and so um, i connected to it and what was interesting was the website listed it and um then i was trying to find the endpoint and for whatever reason i couldn't find it so i wrote them and they said oh we actually did um discontinued it for now we don't have access to it and blah 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 and i said well you know you might want to take it off your website and they said well you know maybe what are you trying to do maybe we can get you access to it for you know a little bit so they um they actually re-enabled it or gave me you know access to it and then gave me 20 dollars to play with um, just to test it out um, unfortunately on this one in particular i was pulling back you know a lot of my my friends and family and stuff and people i know and the data that was appending was pretty darn old um especially like the the cars they owned like that was like around 10 years old you know the the, the vehicles it was listing were eight to ten years older um than what when when they owned it um and and the other information about the household data there's three different types that you can get um so this is the api call for it and i can i can say i can get the the financial their interests so this is sorry not financial this is just their interest overall so it's the things that you'd be interested in and types of things like it said like computers and basket weaving and whatever right all these profile things then there was financial data so information about um how much money you make and this and that or if that household do that person does and then there was data about the household of like you know demographics number of people living in the household and whatnot so i was hopeful now just because this api didn't have data I wanted doesn't mean I won't be able to find that but it was um it was what was nice was it was it's a real simple API to connect to right you pass in your username and password and then um I was telling it which one of these which was either it's FH FI or FF and then I I give it the 
the person to look up and it returns it back in um, a JSON string, I think I can change it to XML as well. But um, super easy to do, and I could burn through a list pretty quickly. But um, again, I gotta search and find one that's a little more current in the data. Um, the next one I did was um, I was playing with. I don't have a working example of it yet, but Twilio. It looks like I closed it from here. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. But it, it actually. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Previous scripts first. Then Twilio. I don't know if there's two L's or one. Twilio, there we go. Um, they have an API. That was interesting. Um, for for sending text and for doing stuff. Um, I didn't get that to work yet, but um, what I looked at was on their site, they have some really great layout of, uh, of um, things you can do. You can create your own bot and automate the replies to people and automate um, sending them a text and asking a question and telling them to choose one or two. And if they choose one, it can automate a reply to them saying one thing. If it says two, you can do another thing. Um, if it, they do something else, it'll say, sorry, that's not a valid answer. Um, there were there were several examples um, that you can do with it. And what I liked about it overall was that it's, uh, it's actually run on a server, so you can build it all and have it there, and it's not running from your desktop. So some of the stuff was cool. Um, so I'm probably going to look at that a bit more. Um, the next one that I automated, I didn't want to get into the, the programming of it, but um, I I had actually, I, I can't remember if I told you guys this. Um, like a month ago, I presented to, where, where I went to grad school, I, I got my master's in market research, and the, the, um, the students there right now, um, I... Let's see, like two months ago, I went out and visited them and showed them a bit about how you can use AutoHotKey to help write syntax and so that. And they they liked the presentation so much, they, they wanted me to to give an entire class on it. Um, so I did that one via Zoom, just, just a remote meeting with them. And so I demonstrated, you know, web scraping. I, I shouldn't say demonstrate. I explained before we get into hot keys and hot strings, which is all I want to teach them because that's so easy to pick up. I said, hey, there's, there's things like web scraping and APIs and all this other stuff. Well... They had a project they were working on that was a really mundane and tedious project that um, that they had five of their students working on for um, a, a company on their board doing a project for them, getting data. And so they basically log into a website, click all these download buttons, and then have to navigate the page. They were exporting it to Excel, and then they were going to have to later merge all these files together. And then just from discussing with them, um, so there's five students doing this. They were talking through, oh, wait, no, you're supposed to do it this way. No, I'm doing it that way. So they were actually creating different files that wouldn't have necessarily lined up. Or they they might have even worse. They might have even looked like they lined up, but they were actually a little bit different because they had changed the filters or something. So anyway, um, they had been working on it apparently for three months. And um, when they explained to me what they wanted, I, um, I said, yeah, this is something I can, I can help you with. And so like that day, I, I spent about an hour writing the program and then um i i sent them back some some data just to, to make sure we're on the right track of making sure i'm getting what they want and they said they were so excited they're like you know in in three hours you've done more by yourself than all of us have done in three months um and it's again because it's in a program right and it's all standardized so it's all coming back um turns out there were some little issues so i had to do some monkeying around with a little bit of stuff but um what was really cool, just I want to bring this up because it's it's just good to hear, right? Is that um the the overall the person in charge of the program was so excited that they actually extended me an offer to be on the board um, for the the program, and so now I'm I actually accept, accepted. But it's all you know as an IT person instead of a research person, which is great for me because um, as much as I loved research and I still like research, but it's it's not my passion, and so now I'll be you know, going out and meeting people, other people on the board whose their background is mostly in research, and yet I'm bringing an IT perspective, and possibly if I wanted, it probably leads to some work. Um, I, I'm, of course, not really looking for actually doing the stuff, but um, I can always hire it out, right? So uh, anyway, that's what I've been up to. I'm in training all day today and yesterday for some other direct marketing stuff, um, which is going to basically be outlining the things I'll be doing for my business, which of course I'll be automating. You know, automation for, for them is, is a very important thing as well for doing direct marketing, but it's much more server side based of getting a drip campaign going and having autoresponders and having a, a squeeze page to 
lead generation, bring people in. Um, so it's fun, but the mindset of all the people there are very um, go-getters, and, and um, I'll probably, um, at some point, I, I've told a lot of people what I do, and I think they're interested, so I'll, I'll probably introduce them to auto hockey to some degree. But that's it. I hope you guys are doing well, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.